Good morning, good afternoon, whenever you're uh, whenever you're you're watching or listening to this. It's uh, Tech Talk for the month of December, and um, I'd like to um, talk a little bit about my, my uh, uh, the MBSI lab. We've spent quite a bit of time and effort setting up this lab, and and uh, and a few weeks ago. Um, Cody and, and Michael were here and they just, they said that, that it would be really good to uh, to uh, just talk about this. And, and um, I said, well, this next tech talk is perfect. So here we are. So we're gonna talk about my lab. So I'll give you a tour of uh, the lab that I have in my office and, uh, and um, just look at some of its capabilities. All right, <clears throat> so a couple of questions we have to ask. What constitutes a lab and, and what's its real purpose? So in, in my case, in our case here at MBSI, the lab has really three purposes. And, 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 uh, and we'll, I'll get into them here as we're going through the, uh, the, the slide deck, but essentially it's, a, it's, a, it's a, to learn technology, to demonstrate that technology and to train on that technology are its three main purposes. And, and secondary um, purpose can be for troubleshooting and configuration generation. So depending on, on uh, what, uh, what uh, the questions are about, you know, whatever the, the type of technology is. So we have a number of technologies in here, gonna see in a minute in a very, very busy slide that, I'll, that uh, we'll see how this, this, my lab is set up here. The key components in, in any lab are, are standards-based connections. So we want to take and make sure that uh, that uh, that um, everything that we do outside of the radio equipment itself is absolutely predictable and and um, you know up to standards based. We need to have um, probes here, there, and everywhere throughout the lab. So that's we. I, I, I uh, my favorite probe um, device is either a Microtech router or um, a Raspberry Pi, um, which uh, very small and, uh, and very inexpensive, but they do the job, they do the job perfectly. So, and then we'll talk about the layout and, uh, and uh, some other details about, uh, about the lab itself. All right. So the number one use, like I mentioned, is training. The, 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 we need to get to know the equipment, we need to get to know the technology, we need to get to know how it behaves. And uh, so with some of the equipment that I've got in the lab here now, um, get questions as to how, how do you make it do this or what is this and, and, and how do I configure it, those kind of questions. And it's very nice to be able to just dial up the, uh, you know, log into uh, CN Maestro or, or uh, log into the equipment directly itself and, and, uh, and, and look at um, what it's doing, how it's behaving. Um, Oftentimes we need to test features and functions. And so in the two years or so that we've had the lab up, we've had a number of different software upgrades that have come along for some of the equipment in the lab. And so these, these feature upgrades have new um, um, procedures that you need to, uh, that we need to figure out, that we need to learn. And so that's the, 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 uh, the uh, secondary function of the lab. Then People are, are making a decision. Should I buy this equipment? Should I buy that equipment? Well, it can, it, I can demonstrate this equipment. We can show you how this works. And then you can make the decision as to whether you want to buy this or do you want to go a different way uh, on this based on, uh, on uh, a demonstration from the lab. So lately, of course, CN Wave, the 60 gigahertz equipment has been um, our, the, the biggest demonstration uh, uh, equipment here in the lab. So um, We'll talk, we'll talk more about that as we're going along here. And then finally, uh, troubleshooting assistance. Um, oftentimes, um, somebody will come along um, with the Telrad gear, um, has been uh, uh, answered quite a few questions, and some with the Cambium 450 and with the 820s. Now Now that we're, we're um, the, the, the price for uh, uh, licensed links here in Canada has come down, we're, move, we're moving uh, lots of uh, license point to points now, and so there's, uh, there's uh, troubleshooting assistance that uh, that we can provide. Uh, operator in the field is seeing a particular set of uh, of, of uh, circumstances. Um, can I emulate that here in my controlled environment? If I can, then uh, then we we can work our way through that or get out. Or if uh, if not, then maybe we can find the reason why 
um, that particular uh, symptom is showing out in the field based on on uh, you know what the ideal should be here in the lab. So those are the those are the the functions that we have here. And in in, in uh, our case here, since uh, uh, it's primarily Ryan and I that, that that use the lab. The availability twenty four seven is the goal. If there's a if there's an issue sometime, and uh, we need to uh, to uh, look at uh, at uh, um, the equipment in the lab and compare it to something that we're seeing in the field, that's the the idea. So in this lab, one of the most important features that. Uh, that I have uh, enabled here is that we have VPN access to all of the subnet, the management platforms in, inside the lab and all the probe devices. So if we need to take in and log in from outside of the office, which is often the case, um, then we can, uh, we can VPN directly into the lab and, uh, and away we go. And I'll show you a little bit about how that works. All right. So primary components, I don't consider the radio equipment that we're actually testing in the lab here to be the primary components. These can change at a moment's notice. But the, what the primary components, um, in, from my perspective, it's, uh, it's uh, the routers and the switches that we use here that uh, are the primary components here. Um, uh, no, it's no secret. I'm a big fan of uh, of uh, Microtik for um, this kind of environment for uh, for for routing and for uh, and and for um, uh, you know VLAN uh, action for you know whatever it is that we need to do. We can set that up very easily with uh, with uh, um, these Microtik uh, routers and switches. Um, I have VLANs all over the place in here. Um, I'll show you the the uh, the interface list in, in my main router here in, in uh, later on and and uh, um, we have stuff I have stuff going here there and everywhere then the other the other most important feature of the lab are the probes so when you hook something up to test it so let's say we've got a uh, let's say a 450i and a, and a 450 um, um, SM set up to test it you, you can put them online. You can you can you can log into them. Uh, you can make them talk to each other. And but how do you know um, what they're actually doing? So the network probes are very important to this. So um, the the uh, the the routers themselves uh, behave as probes. The uh, as I mentioned before, have Raspberry Pis, which are Linux based. And uh, I, I run a Raspberry Pi system called Noobs, and uh, as a, as a Linux distro, it's very very again easy and reliable. And then I also have in in the lab here, I have a number um, two or three uh, Windows um, uh, ten uh, ARM devices, uh, um, particular type of processor, um, very small, lightweight. And uh, it's not doing anything except the network functions that I need, such as uh, you know SSH or whatever it happens to be to to uh, to uh, log in, speed test back and forth, so they run iperf that sort of thing, and uh, and um, uh, away we go. And then <clears throat> finally for power, so I have a number of power systems. Predominantly, equipment today is power over Ethernet based, but there are some systems that are DC based, and so we have a we have a, an ICT forty eight volt power system that's uh, that's uh, available to us that I can take and uh, and uh, run, for example, uh, LTE E node Bs or or uh, my eight twenties right now that I've got in my lab here, my twenty three gig eight twenties. They're running off of DC and uh, and. Uh, um, you know various things. The DC is used, able to be used wherever it needs to. Um, most of the equipment, as I mentioned, is PoE based, and so they either come with their own PoE or we've used uh, we've used a standard, uh, whether it's 30 volt or or, or 56 volt, um, 30 or 15 or 30 or, or or 60 watts, whatever it happens to be that the equipment needs. Away we go. So those are the important components that we have here. Now, as far as software use, 
I try to keep things as unsophisticated as possible so that we can take and, uh, and, uh, and make uh, experiments and, and do tests and that make the uh, results repeatable. So um, I, I, we, we pro the primary tool that we use to uh, log in to look at uh, configurations and, uh, and uh, look at the performance of the equipment are just simply internet browsers. So I, of course, like to use uh, Edge. Most every device out there, um, Edge Canary is Chrome-based. And so it, uh, it it runs on the same engine that that uh, that, that uh, Google's Chrome browser does, and uh, very good luck with it. Have Firefox, have a, have others in there if that's the case, if that's what's needed. Um, I have a, a number of different um, SSH terminal emulation tools. Of course, the first one is Windows. Um, now that uh, that you can enable the subsystem for Linux, you can do uh, Linux functions and that from from uh, the Windows environment, which is very very nice. So uh, I can I can do secure copy, I can do SSH, I can do uh, you know whatever it is that that uh, that's required to be able to talk to the equipment. I have um, a free um, SNMP MibWalk. Uh, tool. So if I need to load a MIB in there to, to find out uh, you know, what, what the name of a parameter is or whatever the case happens to be, do it quite often. Um, when I'm looking for um, the, the ability to build a script in, in Cambium equipment, I use the MIB block, I find the, the parameter that I want, get the, the syntax of it exactly right, and then away you go. You can, you can uh, build what you need to. Also in, in, for software, um, FTP server and clients, uh, TFTP uh, servers, and uh, for some equipment, um, Cambium CNUT. Um, I've used it a, a few times in my lab here to, because uh, somebody out in the field says, hey, I'm using this and it works like this, and why is this happening? And so uh, I'm taking, a, I can emulate it right here. Of course, you know, all lap, laptops and that, Windows 10 and 11 is, uh, I've got some Windows 11 running in here, I've got mostly Windows 10. Uh, running in here, and uh, so it's nothing that's not off the shelf. And uh, <clears throat> I've got various NMS servers that uh, that, I, that I'm using in here. Predominantly, they're a Windows-based computer that uh, that I've taken and, and run uh, VirtualBox in to take and uh, and uh, build the NMS into a container. And uh, for example, um, um, Cambium's. Uh, on-premise CN Maestro comes as a container. Um, the CN Wave E2E -E controller comes as a container and you can simply import it into uh, VirtualBox and, uh, and away you go. Um, they're both based on Ubuntu and uh, Telrad's BreezeView. It's, uh, it, uh, you set up a, an instance of CentOS 7 and then run the installer for BreezeView. And of course it builds the, uh, the, uh, the NMS as though it were a bare metal um, in installation, but of course it's it's not. And then, and then uh, for uh, all of the the Microtik uh, routers um, that I have in here, I use Microtik's own WinBox as uh, as manipulation uh, to manipulate configurations, um, look at performance, that kind of thing. Um, that's that's uh, that's built in. So the software from that perspective is actually quite simple. All right. Let's just pause here for for a minute. Let me uh, let me uh, uh, let's talk about the configuration of the lab that we have right at this very moment. So you can see I've kind of got it divided into 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 two areas, and this is in fact um, in uh, in um, a room separate from my. Uh, my office because of the fact that there are fans running in here and and I got kind of uh, kind of uh, tired of, of uh, listening to the the fans all, all of the time so um, I moved this into into a room next door to my office and then I used uh, cat 5 to connect um, right here to connect um, my main router to my uh, main microtik switch which happens to be uh, in my office. So this, this equipment that's here is all installed inside an IO, IO box. And that's, that's just because I wanted to, to, to uh, demo the box and, uh, and uh, 
you know, that sort of thing. So it happens to be in an IO IO box sitting right in front of my desk and uh, on a, on a, on a bit of a wire rack stand. And uh, so all of this equipment is, is out there. This is in the utility room. So let's take a look at a couple of things here as, as uh, we're, we're, uh, we're going along. All right. So I have, uh, I have access from my ISP happens to be a fiber connection into, uh, into uh, my office here. And um, um, they have their own router that's uh, terminating that, uh, that uh, fiber, um, happens to be an Aris um, Wi-Fi router. Then I come out of the Aris Wi-Fi router and I come into my own uh, Microtech. And, uh, and so from this fiber demarcation here, um, um, we're doing we're doing two layers of NAT. So there's a there's a NAT that's in here for uh, let me just write that NAT that's in in here, and then I'm doing a second NAT that's uh, that's uh, in my own router. So um, I'm NATing the connection between the 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 two routers here together, and uh, of course that's being then NATed out to the uh, out to the internet, and um, all of the subnets that are that are behind the NAT here then of course are all accessible. So in order to um, use this properly, um, I've got a VPN that, uh, that, I'm, that I, can, I, can, uh, I can come off of the internet and uh, pass through the, uh, the, uh, the TELUS demarcation router and terminate of course in, uh, in uh, my own Microtik router on the, behind the NAT. So the, the VPN access is in fact into the, uh, the subnets, all these various subnets that are working behind the scenes here. Um, so that's the, that's the basic, um, the, the, the basic um, um, access of the network. Second to that then, we have a CN matrix and an atonic switch that I've got, uh, that I've got uh, Cat5 cabled and fiber optic cabled off of uh, my main router in here so that then I can take in and, uh, and use that to uh, build other configurations. Um, for example, in the CN matrix here, I've got uh, the 450s plugged into it. I've got some Wi-Fi plugged into it. And it's all, you, it's all set up using what Cambium called their policy-based automation. And so there's a switch group in CN Maestro that uh, that looks after the configuration of the switch, and uh, then uh, the the ports themselves are looked after by this policy based automation. So when I plug the core, no matter what port I plug the core router into, it becomes the core, and all of the VLANs that uh, that uh, that are on here uh, on this leg get transferred to whatever port it is that I plug into. Same thing with the 450, because I'm doing a management VLAN, I'm doing a traffic VLAN, and I'm allowing untagged traffic across the link. So um, if no matter what port on the matrix I plug that into, it configures properly for the uh, 450i um, system. The same with the Wi-Fi. The, the Wi-Fi system that I've got here in my in my office is a, is a CN pilot, it's a Cambium CN pilot. Um, I've got a 410. Um, in the house on my second floor, and I've got uh, a 430 that's actually on the wall here in my office. And uh, so, of course, I've got uh, I've got that on policy-based automation as well as an NAP group. And uh, and so, uh, there's no configuration that's done right inside of the access point itself. It's all done from uh, from uh, the AP group. So the AP group um, has uh, has uh, its uh, it's VLANs um, as uh, in the CN matrix. So when I plug it in, uh, I get PoE, I get uh, the VLANs and uh, configuration all on that particular port. If I unplug it and move it to another port, the policy-based automation cleans up the configuration on the port that it was in, brings it back to, uh, to no configuration and uh, moves the configuration to the port that it's discovered on. So very, very easy. The Netonics, I'm using it for 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 uh, for slightly different. Um, it, it's uh, it's a, a beast when it comes to uh, providing PoE to devices. So um, in this particular case, I've got uh, I've got um, my uh, CI um, 
point to point system that's uh, that we've got running off of it right now it's uh, they've actually got their own poes but i can take and run the uh, the local end of my link local and and local local here and remote here um, run the local end off of the netronic switch and uh, and uh, if i if i should like to to do that and uh, be able to provide uh, the VLANs across the link here to do the in-band management that's required, as well as pass the traffic to my probe that I've got uh, um, on the end of that link. The, uh, all right. So because of this configuration here, what makes this lab really nice is that I can take, and in a few minutes, I can take and reconfigure this to do uh, almost anything that I want. For example, um, the other day I had a customer that uh, that called up and he said, "I'm building a I'm building a a, um, a CN reach system, and uh, we want to take and have um, the units managed on one of the Ethernet ports, but on the other Ethernet port." Um, I want to be able to take and pass the uh, the SCADA traffic, and I don't want the management to see the SCADA traffic or the SCADA traffic to see the management. And these are, of course, bridge devices. So in just a few minutes, I worked out the configuration for that I needed for, for, uh, for that from the router, um, generated the VLANs, the two VLANs that I needed, one for management, one for, uh, for um, the, the, the SCADA, the emulated SCADA traffic and uh, passed it across the RF here to the, uh, to the EP that's out in the field, the remote end again, this is, this is the remote end, um, as in the 450, that's the remote end, uh, out to a router. So I terminated both VLANs um, in the router. So I have management um, uh, DHCP client. I've got a, uh, a traffic DHCP client. Both are getting different addresses from different subnets and the two cannot talk to each other across the link. So mission accomplished. Save the configuration as a JSON file and send it out to the, the, the customer and uh, away it goes. That's the kind of thing that we can do here that's, that, that's really easy, really nice. And, and for all you guys out in the field for, for supporting, this, um, this, this makes it very easy to support uh, whatever the, 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 uh, the equipment is that, uh, that, that you need us to work on. The other beautiful thing about this is that if, if uh, there's new technology that needs to come along, let's suppose, for example, um, that, uh, that we had something, um, oh, I don't know, let's, let's say, for example, uh, EPMP. E for, for just just for example, EPMP 4000 comes out. Um, we, we all know that the 3000 right now is uh, Cambium's latest and greatest with the Force 300s. Um, they now have the Force 425 for point to point, but uh, maybe in, a, in, a, in a few months, a year or so, they're gonna have the, the, uh, the, uh, the 4000 AP and uh, it's gonna talk Wi-Fi 6 to, uh, to uh, Force 400 clients. And uh, away it goes. So to add that to this mix in this lab here now is not a very difficult issue at all. Uh, simply find a place to uh, power it from, plug it in um, in the in the router itself, right in here. Create the VLANs and the subnets that we need to be able to to uh, manage it, talk to it. Um, in the case of CN Maestro, get it out on the internet so it's in the cloud or or in the on-prem. Um, doesn't matter which where where we uh, where we manage it from and uh, away we go. And so that's uh, um, the flexibility that we have with uh, this kind of arrangement. <clears throat> Let's talk about a little bit of the equipment that's over um, in the other. I'm um, gonna start off here with the, uh, with the, the CN wave. So all together, oh, I'll include the probe. All, all together, this is the CN wave setup right here. So I've got uh, a V5000 that's speaking to actually a number of uh, V1000s, two of them at this moment to be exact. And uh, one of them is connected to a Raspberry Pi and I'm using my laptop on the second one. But nevertheless, this is the way, this is the, uh, the arrangement of, uh, of, of the lab at this, this particular moment. Um, this switch has uh, SFP plus ports or it has uh, gig e ethernet ports. Um, so I can take and use either the Gigi or the Ethernet, which I'm doing right now as the pop, 
in the in the uh, B5000. So there we have a you know a 5000 um, sitting there. Um, rather than using the onboard controller, um, need to need to need to um, get uh, familiar, used to configuring the IP version six business that this needs to be able to uh, to go. And Cambium are coming along very nicely and making this automatic. So I included the external E to E controller right here, little uh, little Windows uh, desktop, um, little little guy with uh, sixteen gigs of RAM and uh, and um, and a 500 gig uh, hard drive in it. This actually has a hard drive. It's a little little micro base station, a uh, little micro desktop, I should say. And so in that, in virtual box is running the EDE controller, which, uh, which uh, the, the system is then using for, you know, maintaining its configuration or whatever it needs to do. And um, in the, the 1.2 beta software that's in here, automatically looks after the IP version six routes and uh, so that was the whole point of doing it this way was to take and and uh, and just see what the complications might be in uh, doing IP version six or doing uh, layer two tunneling across the CN wave network. Um, so that 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 was uh, again that once that's set up, um, it's a it's uh, it's pretty easy to do whatever it is that we need to do in order to. Uh, in order to demonstrate the system. So I'm looking forward to version 1.2 and, and after that version two software coming out for the, the CN wave, gonna make this very, very handy. And uh, of course, the moment that it does, we'll be able to uh, spin this up in the lab. And so as you as uh, as you deploy out in the field or, or um, whatever the case happens to be, we, should, we, we can emulate whatever the configuration is that you need for that CN wave right here. So we can come up with the configuration. There we go. <clears throat> Here in the in the in the in the uh, um, in this group of equipment, that's uh, that's a point to point eight twenty, a PTP eight twenty uh, pair running twenty three gig. Um, got them got them configured across the network here. I don't have any keys. Because uh, I don't need any keys to test functionality. What I need to, to or I don't need to have a great amount of throughput. Um, so I'm actually running these at uh, 13 megabits across the link in both directions. So uh, you know, big spender I am, and uh, and so. Uh, um, but the bottom line is here that I can take and, and create any kind of configuration that I want to in this arrangement and uh, be able to uh, to run it. So for example, right now it's got a pipe in between the two radios. So it's kind of the basic configuration and using um, external management at this moment. But if I wanted to go to in-band in management, simply set up a VLAN for that, connect the management together. Um, and it doesn't matter what the VLAN number is, makes no difference, um, and away I go. So I had a customer a while ago that said, hey, we're doing Q&Q. &Q. We're doing, uh, we're, 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 uh, and, and I wanna know what the setup is gonna be, it looks like, um, and we listed, he listed the, the, the observations that he made out in the field. And um, so I said, okay, fine, let's, uh, let's give that a whirl. So um, configured Q&Q &Q here. And uh, because we got a router as a, as a termination here, it's easy to terminate the, uh, the, uh, the service VLAN and then the customer VLAN within the, inside the Q&Q the, the, the &Q &Q and uh, set it up the same way. And lo and behold, yes, we can't do in-band management across that link. We have to do out-of-band management. And, uh, and, and uh, so the, 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 what he saw out in, in the field with his live equipment, I emulated here in the lab. We got it done exactly the same way, verified that this is the configuration that you need to be able to take and work all of this and uh, away you go. And so those are the kind of, the kind of uh, issues that we can, you know, we can help out with. <clears throat> so finally in the lab here today, at, the, at this point in time, the last group of equipment that I've got here is, uh, is, is Telrad's LTE. Telrad's, uh, it's a com I have a Compact 1000 with an embedded EPC. And over here, I have a Breezeway 2020, which is their external EPC um, for the LTE system. And uh, so whether, whether uh, we need to, if you have a, a question about, uh, I've had questions about uh, 
configurations for both the embedded and for the external. How do we do this? How do we do that? How does quality of service work? How does how do I figure out these these traffic flow templates? How do I do those kind of things? And uh, and uh, of course, inside of uh, my uh, my little virtual server over there is my instance of Breeze View. And so uh, here in uh, in one shot, I've got uh, um, 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 a setup that's comparable to what uh, most people have out in the field. There are some operators that would be a bit more complicated than this with maybe MPLS or, or BGP, whatever they, else they've got running. But in, in any case, this is, uh, this is the, uh, the, the way that we demonstrate it. And of course, what I, what I do with the uh, Telrad equipment is about three times a year or so, we run, we've been running since COVID started, we've been running uh, Telrad's virtual courses here in North America. And uh, I enjoy the, doing those very much. It uh, ends up being half a day for three days and um, first day is LTE theory, second day is the equipment, third day is, uh, is uh, management and troubleshooting and a uh, number of different uh, things. But we're using, we're using this equipment right here as the demo. So it's, it's live, it's online, and uh, we want to see how something works, what function works. Well, we can do that. We can probably do it in just a few minutes while, uh, while uh, the student or the participant in the class asks the question. Um, the chances are pretty good that uh, while the slide's up, I can take and log into the equipment and, uh, you know, bring that over and, uh, and, and away we go. Um, <clears throat> all right. Let me just look here at uh, a couple of things. All right. So that's the, 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 the essence of the lab itself. Let me take and uh, just for a second here. Um, um, where do I want to go here? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll, I'll, I'll uh, take the camera here and we'll, I'll just show you what's in the, uh, in the, uh, um, the way that this layout, you know, looks physically and, uh, maybe give you some ideas as to what you might be able to do, um, in your own environment. I recommend that every operator that, you know, deploying any amount of any kind of equipment, I recommend that they set up a lab. It, it, it's a little bit of money that you have to outlay because you probably, you know, you're gonna need one of your access points. You're gonna need one or two or three subscriber units, whatever it happens to be. Maybe maybe you're gonna need a switch. Maybe you're gonna need, you know, some other things for sure. Uh, you're gonna need router and that, but you don't need to have a cloud core router. If you're using a, let's say you're using MicroTech out in the field, you're using cloud core routers, you know, 1036s or something like that out in the field, you do not need to use that in your lab. You can use something with a, with much less horsepower because of course you're not passing, you're not passing any volume of traffic. You're only, uh, you're only testing function, functionality and features uh, mostly. And then you, you know, can run iperf across it or whatnot. So you got, you know, heavy traffic for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, whatever it happens to be. And, and, uh, and uh, you know the other thing is that uh, is that uh, in in amongst this you can run Wireshark, you can do all kinds of things, you can mirror ports, you can uh, you can uh, you know set up all kinds of things in your in your lab like this that you uh, that you need to do. So um, that's the the my recommendation has always been for the length of time that I've been in in the broadband business is that uh, is that you should have a um, you should have a working setup of uh, what you're predominantly deploying out in the field in your lab so that you can take and, uh, and uh, first of all, test new firmware because um, manufacturers are coming out with, uh, with new firmware all the time. Um, you can take and, uh, and uh, add features. So let's say, for example, in LTE, you're going from a 120 megahertz channel to uh, to 240s, um, the 240 megahertz channels. Um, you know we're going to have the opportunity to do that um, here in Canada in the U.S. CBRS has allowed that opportunity to be able to do that. Or maybe in in five gigs here, we're going to take the, uh, the 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 450 and we're going to you know we're going to we're going to add some features to the 450 that you maybe you've never done before. And uh, so the the uh, you know whatever your whatever your equipment is out in your field, you should have a setup similar to this where you can take and uh, and emulate um, what you're doing in the field that's completely separate from the field. You don't want to use production equipment for for that, but you want to take and be uh, isolated and try the feature, test it, see how you see how you install it, 
um, see how you you know update the firmware, that kind of thing. See how it goes. Maybe maybe you can catch uh, some gotchas along the way here, and you do it in your lab where it doesn't bother anything before uh, you know you go out to your main site and you start the process there, and suddenly find yourself with two hundred subscribers out of service. Um, that's what you try to avoid, and uh, of course that's what this this kind of setup is going to allow um, allow us to do. All right, so just for an example here, I can just take and spin this camera around pretty quick and easy. Um, I won't be able to see what, you're, what you've got, but I can take and uh, this point here, there's, uh, there's uh, my Telrad base station, right? Little antenna on it, some attenuators to, to control the RF. Um, inside the IO IO box, there's the uh, pair of 820s that we have, uh, got a switch. Up there, a cloud, uh, a cloud uh, router switch that's up there, cloud smart switch, I should say. And uh, and uh, then up top here, we've got uh, an ICT power supply, the uh, ICT distribution panel. Up here, some breakers installed. And then this is that uh, little base, that little uh, desktop that's running the EDE controller for the CN Wave, which is, of course, there's the B5000. And then uh, Across the way here, I have uh, uh, a tree where uh, I've got the V1000 on the top, and uh, I've got uh, um, a, a Telrad CPE here on the bottom. Got some PLEs, got some Raspberry Pis and stuff that are hanging around here that uh, that are that are used for my probes. And uh, from this, then uh, it's pretty easy to take and uh, and build up any kind of setup that 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 uh, that we want. All right. Let me put this back here. All right. So, oops. Crooked. There we go. That should be better. All right. So, I have some pictures here of, uh, of uh, let's, uh, let's start here. This is, this is my, my setup that's out of, uh, that's in my utility room. So, uh, so I've got uh, a wire rack. Um, I've got a couple of uh, a couple of uh, of small little um, half racks that are one sitting on top of the the shelf, and one's bol bolted to the wall. So the Cat Five in my in, in all my house is terminated up here. So um, when I need to uh, make a, make any configuration change, the uh, that's where I do it. The main router, my main router, is actually on the shelf right here, and uh, and. Uh, and so I've got connection from, uh, from uh, in my case, my ISP down to my main router. And then I've got, uh, I've got uh, um, Nectonix. This with all the bright red LEDs of Nectonix switch. Beside that is a CN matrix switch. So Nectonix, CN matrix. And, uh, and uh, then down to the rest of the equipment here. So as we, as we go down the, the rack here, I've got, Right here, I've got my, my CN Reach, my N500s, AP and EP. They're called, a, 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 the, the subscriber module is called an EP in, uh, in the CN Reach terms. So they're, they're wired into here. There's a 12 volt power supply here that's, uh, that's feeding both of those. And then a Raspberry Pi that's uh, sitting behind it over here. That's the uh, termination for the network. Go down a, a, a step here. And uh, I've, got, um, I've got my 450s. I've got a 450i uh, that's configured as an access point. I have a 450i that's configured, a connectorized 450i is configured as a subscriber module. And I've got uh, 80 dB of attenuation in between them. And I've got the uh, vertical and the horizontal simply connected together. And, uh, and so um, gives me uh, an ideal RF link. And uh, so then I can take and uh, you know configure in-band management, whatever it is I want to do. If you want to run particular VLANs or particular service across the link, then uh, I can emulate it. And uh, again, got that terminated in a probe. And uh, and so then uh, we can we can do iper from end to end or whatever it is that we need to do. Down here on the bottom, in this little conglomeration down here, I have. Uh, the, the my 23 gig CI Alpha 2 Plus setup XG 
So in this setup here right now, it's running. They're running on Gigi interfaces. Um, it's running XPIC across the uh, the two. But in the same way as the uh, as the 450, I have uh, 80 dB of attenuation between the 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 uh, the vertical ports on uh, on on the two radios, and I've got 80 dB of attenuation between the horizontal ports on the radio. And then they're running uh, XPIC as the protocol, which means I'm using the same frequency for both the vertical and the horizontal. And uh, I'm able to, uh, in, this, in this particular case, with, uh, with a 50 megahertz channel, I'm able to, to run about 600 megahertz, or 600 megabits per second, I should say, across this link on both the horizontal and the vertical, adding up to you know, 1, 1 1.2 gigish in each direction when you uh, bridge all those together. And uh, if, I, if this were out in the field, if I were doing this as a production network, I would take and, 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 uh, and use, uh, use uh, uh, 10 gig SFP, of course, to feed the, feed the base stations, uh, perhaps PoE from a, from a switch, like a Natonix or maybe an external PoE device to uh, power them up and away I go. And so we can emulate that right here. That's the thing is that, is that if you came along and, and said, I wanna do um, this, this or that or the other thing, um, the reason that this, this pair has XPIC in it right at this very moment is that a customer of ours um, was putting up his own 11 gigahertz link and uh, was to the point where, well, we need to look at the configuration in this thing. We need to make it uh, do what, uh, what he wanted it to do. And so uh, we went through enabled XPIC on, on my lab equipment, which showed him the process to do it on his equipment, which happens to be already out in the field. And one of the units are mounted up on a mountain top. So access to it right now in the heavy snow is you know, almost non-existent. And uh, so we managed to uh, do that. The, uh, the uh, conversion from a single stream to uh, the XPIC dual stream went without a hitch. It was perfect. So, and that was because we worked out the configuration here first. So here's the manual, what the manual says. Here's the configuration, the way it works out. This is what it looks like then. And uh, bingo, then uh, this is how you deploy it out in the field. Go ahead and do that. And uh, away you are. So second, the second view here going right to left is... Uh, that, that speaker pole that uh, that I showed you here, I use it for all kinds of things. So uh, so right now, that's a that's a Telrad CPE twelve thousand. This is a V one thousand um, for the CN wave. So that's sixty gigs. That's three gigs. And then sitting back here happens to be actually some equipment that's on loan to me from uh, from Telrad Breeze Air. It's called, and which I'm doing uh, doing. Uh, report on at this very moment. So one ends in the in my lab inside the utility room, which happens to be right there. And uh, the other end is, is out here. So it definitely it's a non-line of sight capable product. So I've definitely got it non-line of sight running through a couple of walls and, uh, and away I go. <clears throat> and then finally, here's the, uh, the on the very left IOIO box, which of course I could show you because it's right here in front of my desk. But uh, we've got a Raspberry Pi that's sitting on here that's a termination for, for the 820s. Got a router here that, uh, that uh, is, uh, is um, um, between the, uh, the Raspberry Pi and the 820s themselves. So as I was doing the, uh, the Q and Q, we had to terminate in a switch or a router. So I, I have a spare router. So I just put the router up there and, and did it in the router. So it comes from the from the switch into the into the uh, local end, goes to the remote end, and then back up to the uh, whoops, back up to the uh, the uh, router, and then uh, ultimately the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm starting to get enough RF in the room here that uh, that uh, I had to take, and instead of just uh, using uh, terminations on the end of the Telrad here, um, I had to actually install an antenna, a little little uh, little six dBi antenna that I found at. Uh, at uh, one of our suppliers called Elcom. And uh, so that with some attenuators on there, lower the RF to the, the point where it's absolutely harmless and it goes across the room just fine and end up with a, a decent signal level here in, the, uh, in the, uh, the, the CPE that's across the way. And uh, I've run this little arrangement now for two separate L LTE courses and it's worked just perfectly fine. All right. Um, so that's that is the arrangement that we have here 
in our lab. And, and so, um, you know, feel free. If you've got any questions about any, anything at all, you know, don't hesitate to, uh, to, to uh, drop Ryan or I or, or to, uh, to um, you know, support at mbsiwave.com or at marketing at mbsiwave.com and, uh, and we'll be happy to answer the questions. And if there's something that we need to add or we need to do for you or, you know, whatever the case happens to be, well, we, we, can, certainly, uh, we, we can certainly do that in here. So this is the the the, the beauty the beauty about this is that it's not a it's not a you know static can't change anything kind of configuration it is fluid. All right. So a couple of future enhancements that we're going to do in order to you know increase our customer service as some of you or maybe maybe all of you know um, we're a member of a triad of companies so MBSI Wave and uh, and uh, Wave Online and Last Mile Gear in Oregon are all um, related to each other we're sister companies and and so quite often um, um, we do work with uh, with Wave and on 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 issues for example um, um, I participate with uh, with uh, with uh, Mark Billets, Waves uh, Waves uh, um, senior engineer, um, in the in their their uh, point to point H twenty training lab. So oftentimes we will take and uh, and uh, tag team. It's a two day event. Should be uh, should be actually a three or four day event. So we compress the information because of the you know COVID and and having to do things virtually into and uh, into a, a much smaller time frame. And uh, away we go. So um, we participate in that. So our plan um, is that uh, is that a second lab is going to be permanently set up in Aurora, Illinois, and it's going to be, of course, focused on their U.S. customers because that's that's their 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 biggest. Uh, I mean, that that's that's who they serve, and um, and it's going to consist. It already consists of um, a very um, uh, a very nice. CN Matrix, CN Pilot, um, with a future Wi-Fi 6 uh, lab to be able to do virtual boot camps. Um, we've done a number of them, and um, they've turned out just fine. We share this lab with Cambium. Even Cambium hasn't got a lab with the, the features that we have, with the, you know, the VPN access and, and uh, other things that... Uh, that allow this to work, and so um, shared with Cambium, they uh, they've done their own boot camps using uh, using the uh, Aurora Illinois facility um, to be able to take and uh, and uh, you know show off the features of uh, of the CN Matrix uh, switching platform of the CN Pilot Wi-Fi platform. Um, also, there's a the the already set up is the uh, the PTP A20 training lab. It's uh, it's um, uh, six links. There's uh, one of them is a six gig link, one is an eleven gig link, and the other is a fifteen gig link, I think. And and um, so anyway, as uh, as students join the uh, the uh, the certification training for the PTP eight twenty, uh, the Cambium training, um, which is hosted by by Mark Billets, um, during the lab portion, um, everyone will will uh, be able to. Uh, get into their own radio, be able to virtually be able to configure it, be able to, uh, you know, follow along and, uh, and uh, make it uh, communicate with the partner. There's uh, laptops um, in there that uh, are accessed with any desk. And uh, so you're able to take and uh, log in right in front of the radios, more or less, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, do whatever it is that you need to do. So it's, uh, it's a very nice lab also. For future, um, uh, Francisco Mendez is uh, is the uh, is the service supervisor there, the the engineering supervisor. Him and I have talked about um, adding a PTP eight hundred and fifty into the lab, since there are some things about the eight hundred and fifty that are very different than the eight hundred and twenty. Um, um, we've talked about uh, uh, um, EPMP lab. Um, since I don't have any EPMP equipment here, and sometimes it would be it would be nice, and for them too, they they move quite a lot of EPMP equipment. Um, be able to have the lab down there with uh, with uh, access point uh, uh, cabled 
to the uh, to the subscriber modules. You know, same thing as what uh, what uh, we have here in in Canada, um, just with the uh, the the eight fifty product line. I mean, the EPMP product line, and uh, and away we go. And of course, they also because of the the popularity of uh, CN Wave, they are also going to. Uh, um, put up a, a CN Wave lab as well for the very same purposes that I use it for, for demonstration purposes, for, you know, whatever uh, training, whatever it needs to be. Um, and of course, um, in the future here, as, I, as I've mentioned a number of times here, that we're going to take and add technology to this lab as the new technology comes along, as, as equipment becomes available and is, uh, is uh, you know, being popularly deployed, then we'll incorporate uh, a link or two here in the lab to be able to take and, uh, and uh, train and support you and whatever it is that, we need, that you need from MBSI in order to uh, do this. And so both uh, the, the Wave Lab and the MBSI Lab will behave in a similar manner. And uh, depending on what the equipment is, we might set it up in Aurora and have access to it through VPN, or we might set it up here in in, uh, in Calgary. And uh, in that case, Mark has access to my lab, and and uh, and so he can VPN into into it as well. And so um, occasionally he does. Oops. So that's um that's about what I had for today. Um, if you've got any questions, you know, feel free to uh, drop us a line. If um, you uh, have any suggestions, um, again, uh, just feel free, drop a line, and uh, and uh, you know, let us know, let us know what you uh, what you uh, what your needs are, and uh, we'll be happy to take and uh, and do the best we can. And so. Uh, I just uh, I don't see there's uh, there's no questions up on the on the uh, chat line right at this very second, which is which I guess is okay. And um, but at this uh, at this moment uh, we're just a couple of minutes ahead of the top of the hour, so we'll uh, wrap it up here, let you go, and I uh, want to thank you for joining and uh, have a great day. We'll see you later.